To be completely honest, I feel a lot of pressure. Today we're not really as good as people think. We are still facing a lot of challenges and difficulties. We had a great meeting and a great, great entrepreneur, one of the best in the world, and he loves this country and he loves China. I do. I do China and love America. I'm the person I always look forward. I don't want to look at the things back. More on this, Santosh Rao joins us now from New York. He's the head of research at the Merchant Bank Manhattan Venture Partners. Welcome back to Money Talks, Santosh. Now, Jack Ma really does have an extraordinary story, doesn't he? He was born to a poor family in China, rejected for 30 different jobs, including one at KFC, before he eventually founded Alibaba and is now China's richest man. What legacy does he leave behind? Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing story. Uh, literally, you can say rags to riches to some extent. So I think that was a real, uh, uh, and he'll be well known for what he's achieved. And it's a remarkable achievement to grow this company from nothing to one of the biggest e-commerce companies, half a trillion dollars. So this achievement is great, and he's done it very humbly. Uh, and very, uh, in a good way. So it's been all straight up, uh, very well thought out. Now he's built a diversified business. He's really brought China into the mainstream in terms of e-commerce and also in terms of just, uh, just the business itself. He's really put China on the global map in uh, terms of what they can achieve uh, when they put their heads together. So I think it's an amazing legacy he's going to leave behind. Uh, the company will miss him. But he, he had already announced it uh, about a couple of years ago, so he had kind of hinted that it wasn't total surprise. But any time a legend such as, him, such as him leaves, there will be a void that needs to be filled. Well, that's right. And there's often a lot of nervousness, isn't there, when the founder of a company does leave, such as uh, Bill Gates when he left Microsoft, uh, Apple founder Steve Jobs when he died. How do you think Alibaba will go without Jack Ma? Well, I think... Uh, he he's built a solid business. It's a well diversified business. Uh, there will be uh, his shadow will still be around. I mean, uh, just like Bill Gates, he's around as an advisor, and uh, I'm sure the CEO can go and consult him. But I think what he wants to do is really take what he has, what he has built, and kind of take it to other areas in China. So he has the leverage. He has the know-how. He has the, uh, what do you call, uh, he's well-known. So he can really bring a lot of other industries to what uh, he's built with Alibaba. And that's what he said. He wants to make, uh, he wants to build Alibabas in other sectors, in AI, in other, other technology, technological areas. So he has good vision. It'll be good for China. Uh, I'm sure his efforts will be, his time will be well spent. Uh, he's already done what he had to do here. Uh, I think the future is uh, where he wants to be. And one of the big things that he did do with Alibaba was uh, taking the company public on the New York Stock Exchange back in 2014. It was seen uh, as a seminal moment for Alibaba, and indeed it's, it's still the biggest IPO in history to date. Do you think it was the right move for the company? Absolutely. I mean, he came out at the right time. Uh, it was a great move. Uh, he raised a lot of money. Uh, and the stock is doing very well. So uh, uh, he, he did the right thing. At, uh, I think at that time there was talk about where is he going to list and all that. So I think by listing here, he did the right thing. He got the liquidity. The size of the deal was so big, only U.S., the, uh, the U.S. exchanges could really do justice to that. So I think this, And that's what he got. He raised a lot of money, got good valuation, 
and he's trading very well right now. Mm. Now, Alibaba is often described as the Chinese version of Amazon, but it still hasn't managed to achieve the same level of global penetration as its US counterpart. Why do you think that is? Why hasn't it been able to really penetrate those markets outside of China and Asia? Yeah, I think uh, Alibaba has always been China focused. Uh, it had a country risk all along, country focused. So that was their main area. Now they started going into peripheral areas, uh, the other Asian countries. They're trying to go into India. They are, they are in other countries through investments, other investments. Uh, and uh, the problem with uh, China is that they block the foreign countries going in. Like Amazon cannot really do business in China, uh, unlike uh, Alibaba can do business here. So there's always that the trade practice that uh, we talk about, the unfair in, imbalance there. But but, but he's benefited from that. He's built this. Uh, he had no competition in China, uh, so he, he could build that. So I think it's going to take a lot of time. Uh, he's, uh, his products are really there. His customers are really in China. So it's, uh, it's going to take a long time for him to really compete aggressively here. Uh, but he's more focused there, uh, uh, China and the peripheral markets there. Okay, Santosh Rao, we'll have to leave it there. But thank you for your thoughts, as always.